we did say that uh, our today's theme is defending the significance of marriage. Later in the evening, we'll be talking about speaking truth in love. We have read the part of the gospel that is um, the Sermon on the Mount. And we talk about the Beatitudes. And I just wanted to capture a few things in that. And then we are able to see how our couples can be able to defend the significance of marriage. We said, and this is what we have said um, along the way as we did the journey, that uh, marriages and the family are the most attacked institutions because the two constitutes what it is in the human race. We also have said in the past that if we can get it right in our families, the rest is sorted out. Because as it were, from whichever other sector that we are found, all these men and women, eventually they will go home. Eventually they will be called dads. Eventually they will be called moms. Eventually, they will be called husbands and wives and the others. That tells you that uh, we share one thing in common. We are all members of uh, one family or from various families. Poor in spirit, as we have read in the gospel, refers to realizing that everything inside us pales down with the comparison of the greatness of God. And we have said, in fact, even in our, one of the, I think, three days in the 31 days, the focus about and on the significance and the greatness of God as the rock on which every family is actually built. Mourning comes to those who truly follow Christ because the ways of this world are not the ways of God. As a result, life is hard at times for those who follow Jesus. And you may realize that many a times when we are so well um, grounded in the following of Jesus, the more attacks we get. When it comes to righteousness, people who follow Christ must desire so much that they hunger for it and thirst for it. A push that we have always um, talked about when it comes to the authenticity of our marriages and where our couples stand. Righteousness and to be merciful will always mean to not be looking to get even all the time, but rather to overlook offenses and wrongs done to you, especially within the institution of marriage. One of the marriage um, principles states that marriage is not a prize-giving event, but a sacrificial offering journey a journey of two perpetual forgivers. Marriage is not a prize-giving event, but a, sac a sacrifice offering journey, a journey of two perpetual forgivers. That means, remember we said eh, another hard truth is that marriage offers a platform where love can die a permanent death. With that in mind, then we are reminded that it's important that for them who are in marriage, there will be many times that you'll hurt each other. But the good thing is, 
for the perpetual forgiveness, um, it keeps you always on track. We are pure in heart by surrendering our hearts to Jesus and everything. When men and women in marriage surrender whatever it is that they have in, um, to Christ, of course, what we, the, what the result is untold and unexplainable peace. We can make peace, practically speaking, by seeking to be humble, bringing about resolution when possible, and encouraging one another to be a people of peace. In one of the days that uh, our gracious uh, wives were praying for their husbands, uh, is that um, one of the days that they were praying that they themselves be uh, agents of peace and transformation. Because you may have a peaceful husband, but a wife, there can be a peaceful husband, but a terrorist wife. So, and that is why we also remember in our novena, let us not just focus on the husbands. Because your family may be good, because the husband is good, but you, you are a combination of a terrorist and a mafia. So that means that family does not need husband to change. It needs now you as the wife to get transformed. That is why we said, uh, if you remember in the introduction of the novena, we said uh, one of the benefits of a married woman praying for her husband is that that journey alone changes her. Because it is not just about the husband, it's about the person praying for purposes of righteousness. And we have said, uh, in principle, righteousness, mercy, purity, and peace are characteristics that God possesses. Now, they are also the characteristics of someone who is seeking to live in love for the kingdom of God and seeking holy life in Jesus. Now, remember that the way of the world says that if something is bad, if something bad is happening to you, then it means that maybe you may have done something wrong. It is not true. There are so many men and women um, suffering in their marriages, not because they have a problem, but because maybe the, the partner has a problem. In other cases, not because both of them have a problem, but because maybe one of the vouchers outside there may have uh, uh, come in to destabilize their peace. Jesus now flips that on its head. And he says that you may be persecuted for following and obeying the Son of God. Dear good people, this homily hints on marriage with marriage being a widely discussed topic everywhere that there are opportunities to address this issue and that it is important that uh, our husbands and our wives sit down to discuss their marriage and to work on it. In fact, we say that marriages never work in magic. Marriage is not a magic thing. Somebody must endeavor to work for it. As we, all, we always told that when we are doing something for our marriage, something will always happen. We may be very prayerful people, but I have said that it's not every problem that is solved through prayer. It is as simple as that. Although sometimes we hide in church and in prayer, seeing that uh, if I am praying for my wife and I have not fixed my manners, my prayers are useless. Unless I make a decision. Because I will pray, yes, but what is hurting our marriage? Maybe our marriage is being hurt by my, my full mouth. And therefore, even if I pray and I have not changed the, my packaging of words to my partner, then that becomes very difficult. So, 
we say in this context that yes, 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 our, our, our couples must, must endeavor to work, to work for their marriages. Now, the fundamental point to convey here is that marriage is the loving, faithful, permanent union, and God has concern in it. Now, that is important. God has concern in our marriages. Now, in the sacrament of holy matrimony, couples promise to one another a love that is free, faithful, total, and fruitful. Free, faithful, total, and fruitful. That promise constitutes what it is the will of God. Now, Shida inakua, there is what God would want us to live, but then there is what we are doing. You enter into a marriage where there should be that communion. The opposite of communion in marriage is called Jerusalem Jericho paradigm. Whereby the husband faces south, the wife faces north. The perception is different. The world view is different. And if you want to know that a marriage has a Jerusalem Jericho paradigm, wait until you have an issue that you want to solve. That's when you realize that when you thought that you sat to discuss the chair, you realize that your partner is at the gate. And then you wonder, Allah, to the a gate lini. I thought we were to do the chair and then the door. Next week when our parents come, we discuss the gate. For me, the gate is so important. Because with Jerusalem Jericho paradigm, priorities change. Now that is serious. When priorities change, you, you think that what is important is that I buy food. That's the husband. And the wife says, that is okay. But what is important at this point is my hair. Now you ask. You see, as a husband, you may want to ask in your heart if you are as quiet as me. So you ask in your heart. Uh, of course, you have to come to Uriza because if you are married to a terrorist, terrorists, you don't ask them good questions. Because for them, good questions are an insult. So if you are married to a terrorist, you must also go to school and be taught how to package matuziyako. Ikaya kama Bible verse. God is good. <laughs> because there is nothing as bad as discussing something with somebody who is not on your yam. If you are operating on this broadband and your spouse is higher here, it will always mean that you will never understand each other, even if you are both to go to heaven and then you come here for holiday. Until such a time that you are able to be on the same platform. Then you can discuss the chair and you put that to bed. Then you go to the gate and you put that to bed. It is only later, later, if you have time, you discuss aesthetics and beauty. I, I once had a story. A young man, come how a kora kwaapa, jamaa ali pata job. Ali po pata job, akapata nyuba. So, at the same time, he had a girlfriend who would appear and disappear. So this guy, in his home, you see, people have different tastes and priorities. Jamaa me pata nyuba, haina bed. Haina kiti, haina sufuria. It has nothing. It had nothing. And when he got his first salary, in an empty house, empty kabisa, jamaa kwanza linunua TV. Sasa hapo tipo unajua, you may be dating a lizard. Because... <laughs> Because, 
Because somebody who shows up with a two inch TV, na hakuna zufulia. Hey, hapa tipo najua Yesu. Kama huyu ni wako, hata yuko na shida. <laughs> but you see now, that is now when you realize that if you are now in the same realm with that person, and then you want to discuss something, remember now, for you, because of how you have been socialized, you may think logically that sinivizuri first you get a bed and a chair and a sufuria and something. Later, TV. Jamaa nazema hapana. Kwanza kecho kuna aseno. So you can imagine amenunua TV na ni wa aseno. Sinona hiyo ni hiyo ni double tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, God is good. Oh, pole ni sana sasa. So the moment now we hear that uh, we are not reading the script that God would want us to read. That is where that then now we we need to ask, how does God teach love? Because there is the way that the world teaches love, and there is the way that God teaches love. And the teaching of love for God is intactile and completely unseen. But the world teaches love differently. It must be something tangible and, of course, seen. And the moment we, we concretize the abstract, because some some of these issues were supposed to be at that level. But then you want to see that, I want to, to know that you love me, ukinibaiya kiyatu. And you know, that is also good because if you say that, uh, if you love me, you do this for me. Something that can be seen. Then you have departed from the, the script of God. Now you are with the script of men and women. And that is why the first crash happens. And that is why it is important when the couple are going through the marriage uh, instruction, before they get married, they must be taught there is a, a unit called how to fight in marriage. In that unit, people are taught how to, to evaluate their, their temperaments and how they were socialized. And then how they internalize their needs and their wants. Because the way we were socialized and the values we were taught are so different. And because you and your husband or you and your wife are not from the same mother, there will always be some differences. But it's good that people are guided. So that when we get there, we will know that when we fight, we don't fight as enemies. Because the husband cannot be an enemy, the wife cannot be an enemy. But the husband and the wife must always be ready, spiritually speaking, to identify the enemy. But then that is not possible if they have not created an atmosphere where both of them can listen to one another. And then they ask, where could we be going wrong? Once we have understood that, then we'll talk about the uniqueness of this institu institution in which that um, the bonds men and the women form can only be as strong as the owner. Now, this is where we need to differentiate. Who owns marriage? In the understanding of men and the women, the couples own their marriage. And again, remember in the Catholic liturgy, we are told, and it is true, in fact, it is also as true theologically as it can be true liturgically, that even the celebration of the Holy Mass, for the Holy Matrimony, the main celebrant is not the priest. The main celebrant is the couple. Now that is where if the, our couples are not well catechized, that is where they miss the point. In fact, most of the marriages will start their crack on the altar. There is a disease we call in marriage therapy, Kufika concept. It kills both marriages 
and vocations to priesthood and sisterhood and brotherhood. When we view the altar as our final destination, we have heard stories where the couple came to church, they did their wedding, in the evening, the husband or whoever or the wife removed the ring, alafu wanasema, sindi kupitaka kanisani. Sasa ngangana na hii. On the first day, the first day, is the day that you are returning the ring. Then that tells you that maybe you are going somewhere. Where was that somewhere? That somewhere was the altar. Na labda, minataka tu nipiteke kanisani. And that is why, if you have disagreed with your husband, and this is, I want to speak to our gracious women, because there is a mistake that they always make. If you have disagreed with your husband and you have not solemnized your marriage in church, part of the return to work formula should never be the church. Lakini hapa dipo shetani wa ukora na igiria. Jamana sema sasa hapa dipo nitamshika. Simekuwa nikimwambia tafanya ruse na amekataa. Na sasa tuliko sana sasa nikapotea ananikujia nyumbani. Lazima tu agree nipeleke kanisani. Now that that is blackmail. And jamaa atakubali tu because anataka urudi. Alafu unasema if you want me back you have to promise my parents that tutafanya nyarusi arusi kanisani. But you see there is a question that is not being asked here. Why did we separate? Are you at home because of the church? No. Are you there because of the sacrament? No. Why then introduce that which was not an issue? when we want to solve a major problem that we had. Maybe we had issues of communication. Coming to church and receiving the sacrament does not solve communication problem. Maybe you left it because I, ha um, I drink a lot. I am not coming here for detox. <laughs> if we understand that, then we are okay. You will not blackmail your husband telling him kama unataka nirudi unipeleke kanisani jamaa atakuleta na akikuleta hapa after kutoka hapa atakuambia nilikupeleka kanisani chika hii I didn't know at that point you can't go home because among your grievances yenye usema wazee wakiwa in kuding chief na police constables ni upelekwe kanisani na kutoka hapa ukaambia your mama mama tunafanya harusi mjipage ujama hata nzugusha hivyo tena na wote wanakuja harusi lakini hawajui harusi ni yako na hakuna kitu gumu kama kwenda kwa ratari and the wedding is yours alone alone that is why it is always important to ask this fundamental question why are we going to the altar are we going to the altar because wazazi walisema are we going to the altar because it is part of what we have agreed both? Are we going there because I want my problem solved? Are we going there because I want to circumvent a curse that was said by my grandfather before he died? Are we going there because I have myself covenant? Nilipokuwa campus nilijiabia mimi sasa yolewa kama sitapeleka kanisani. Na jamaa alikuwa na another covenant. Mimi sasa hiyo kama sijaiza. Sasa hapa hapa kuna watu wawili. Mmoja akasema lazima nipeleke kwa kanisani ili nioe, niolewe. Mwingine akasema hapana. Uwezi kupeleka mtu kama huko na kama haujui uh, kama haujui nini, kama <laughs> God is good please. <laughs> Sasa hapa kuna kuwa na ka crash. So now if we do not understand that this is not our marriage doa iko na mwenyewe na mwenyewe ni mwenye alianzisha the moment we understand that we are standing on the rock that is Jesus Christ the moment we get that then we will be okay it is at that point then the couples each one of them allocate themselves duties of defending this marriage ukipewa gift you defend the gift Ukiabiwa eh, hii kanisa ni yetu. Kwa hivyo eh, tuilide. Just the way we do our faith. Every couple has a duty 
that they have been given such a special gift and this gift must be protected. So, I want to use uh, the example of this cuddle. Now, if I am carrying this cuddle, hey, can I get somebody to come? Teacher Kuja. So, I am giving you this cuddle and uh, it is very weedy. I want you to take it there. But it's very weedy. Make sure that it gets there from here. Now, are you seeing what he, he is doing? What Mwarimu is doing is that he is trying to protect the cuddle from going off. So, he'll try his level best to make sure that the flame is still intact as he goes there. What he is doing, remember he is holding with one hand. The other hand is here. We are assuming that the, the weed is coming from this side. Are we communicating? So, and because the weed can change, that's what we have, we have read in the Beatitudes, that is why we need the second hand. The first hand is here. So the second hand will come here. So this is what we say in, just stand there. Uh, this is what we say, we say in marriage. Come, 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 joy. Assuming she is your wife, assuming. <laughs> <laughs> we know people. So, <laughs> so, so hold that. Now, you see when he is holding that cuddle, uh, we say if, when they are getting married, we say, now listen here, I have got the right of marriage here. After kulizwa maswadi, wanabiwa, Now, listen here. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent. So already two hands are engaged. Are you getting the point? Two hands are engaged, but each one of them has a hand that is free. I need to communicate to the couples why there is one hand that is free? Where, where is your right hand? Is it functional? Yeah. You are here. <laughs> is it functional? Yeah. Okay, assuming. Eh? <laughs> now, <laughs> here there is a hand that is actually free. And there is one here that is actually free. These two hands, their, their purpose is to protect the flame. Each one of them must make sure that the flame they were given must get to the owner intact from day one. So if it is here, if we were to place it there, then her heart will come here and his heart will come here. And each will do their part. This is a katayini thing and there is a big heart. <laughs> but small as it is, it is also doing the work of protection. This is exactly what a couple does. They will make sure that the engaged hand can be able to hold the, the flame. And then the free hands make sure that all the time we must take this candle to the owner, this light to the owner. Mwenye aditupatia na mwenye abaye ni mwenye doa. And I would want to say this great morning. If you want, if you want to get married and you do not understand this simple concept, please don't get married. And if you have to, marry yourself. <laughs> go, go and sit down. Kwanza Eda, assuming. <laughs> now go. <laughs> the moment we understand that, then we will say that uh, then we are okay. It is at that point then we ask, how will a couple defend the significance of their marriage? They will do that by identifying what can drain, what can drain their marriage. And I want to share with you this great morning, the eight marriage drainers. 
eight marriage drainers that if our couples are able to understand them, plus a few other uh, parts of wisdom, then we are going to sour. Marriage drainer number one is unending conflict and crisis. Unending conflict and crisis. I remember one time I was giving a talk to young people in some university setup. It should be about 10 years ago. We were doing the, the, we call them, the do's and don'ts of dating. And we, we said, if, if you are, you know, you may be a bit unfortunate that you are, you are, you are a young man and you have, you have a girlfriend. And you meet once a week. For example, you meet every Saturday. And when you meet because of what, uh, how your life is, you can only meet for two hours. And then you realize that for those two hours, the first one hour is to explain the blue tick. <laughs> the first one hour. <laughs> the second 30 minutes is to, is to, is to discuss the, 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 busy, the busy phone. Your, busy, your phone is always busy. You explain, you explain, you explain, you explain, you explain 30 minutes. Now you remember you have only 30 minutes left. Now, and you know, either God is very good because he's very good, and if you're on the wrong, Shetani is also real. It is only when, only when the, you would never want things to happen, they actually happen. And just when somebody is studying your phone, it is the only time a funny message will pop up. <laughs> and then maybe you had, you had told her that, you know me, if you hear me uh, with my phone calls, it's my mom calling me. If not my mom, uh, she will show you my friend. To snogia gasana. Wakatuna unazema tunogia gasana kamizi kana chipuka. Hi sweetie. Ala. Because I am named after, his, after the wife and the husband who was the brother and the uncle and he is dead in heaven. Allah! <laughs> then from there, Sasa, Shina Itakua, Vita Itakua, Yahio Masaya, Ishe, Alafu Mwede. The next time you pick up from where you left, then you realize you are actually doomed right from day one. If you are in a marriage that has an ending conflict and crisis, emotionally you get drained. Because kama kila siku, munaogea juya kitu kimoja. Maybe you've been married for 10 years. And for those 10 years you've been married, you have been fighting over only one thing. There comes a time that one gets uh, tired. And there is nothing as difficult and dangerous as a couple who are emotionally drained. And those unending conflicts and crises drains. Number two, unforgiveness. Now, and here I want to address myself to our gracious ladies. There's one writer who says something, and I have always thought it is true, that women don't forgive. And when they do, they forgive and keep the script and they'll forgive you on account of the last scene. So if you messed in January, atakuwabia ni mekusa mehea. Arafu then you mess in May. The first statement. Unakupuka venye ulufanya January? Unazema, ala, nazi uliniza mehe. Eh, ni yikusa mehea. I wanted you to just remember, I have also forgiven you. You make a mistake in August, the chain, January. Me, and where we are. We have always said, and uh, I know I have taught enough times on forgiveness. Forgiveness does not benefit the offender. Forgiveness benefits the offended. In fact, when I forgive, I am the first beneficiary. Gracious ladies, if you want to be happy, whether you are married or not, it's always when you'd want to be the beneficiary. Whenever you are wronged, eh, allow yourself to benefit through forgiveness. Number three is the assumptions. Assumptions. There are so many marriages today, Zico, at a dead rock, because of the assumptions. 
there is so much in weirdos and half truths that are being peddled around. And because nobody wants to face the truth, then uh, the couples will always treat each other suspiciously. And then they say something we call cold war. Na hakuna kitu gumu kama cold war. Because the assumptions, the assumptions will now make couples to be lonely in their own homes. And you can imagine how difficult it can be to be lonely in a home where you are supposed to be loved. And maybe God has blessed you with a big home, a big home, but inside you cry every day. Very sad. Number four, refusal to change and adjust. Refusal to change and adjust. There is a disease we call in marriage delayed teenagehood. Delayed teenagehood is a situation where one of the spouses or both refuses to grow up. They are married, but this gentleman is behaving, he is now in marriage seven years, but he is behaving exactly the way he was the second day in the university. And he's still hanging out with his boys. And the boys, not that they're adding any value to him. He is in a, in a, in a, in a, in a cocoon of himself. And when you, are, when you ask him, he thinks that you are becoming personal. He got married. Socially, he is married. But psychologically, he is ego. Na hakuna kitu gumu kama kuwa na a husband who has a single mind. The mind of a single man, but here, the guy is married. Anaitu wa baba nani. Lakini hapa, anaitu wa Jeff. Alavu na mwigina anaitu wa Joshua. Na adisi, and he is so happy when he is called those names. As opposed to Mabaka, Baba Karo. <laughs> if one refuses to change, if it is one partner, the other partner becomes frustrated because they are trying to go. But you, but you can't. It's just like when, when you are seated. If you try to rise up and somebody is holding your shoulders, and bogging you down, you'll be so tired because for you, you want to rise up and go. But somebody is holding you down because you got married to a fellow who is continuously growing old but never growing up. That's a sad thing. Number five, selfishness. Selfishness is when you are actually married to... Um, to a consumer. It's just like you married uh, a domesticated animal. Sugura, so gurue, hizo wanyamba zinaketi kupewa food. And you can imagine if you have that kind of a spouse who doesn't want to work, maybe you have a beautiful lady whom you married, but she Apart from being beautiful, there is nothing else she has anything good. Nothing else. She is as lazy as the word itself. <laughs> she is so visionless. The brain is almost absent. God is good. And number three, she has no skill. She has appetite, but she can't cook. You know, because how do you have appetite and you are the main one in the house but you can't cook? But then she is just there. Looking smart, painting her nails, painting her nose, and uh, <laughs> now, but for her she wants, that is, that is when you know that, ah yeah, here I married a consumer. <laughs> In your house, you have a beautiful sugura. 
Or on the other hand, you have a husband who does not buy food, does not pay rent, does not pay school fees, does not do anything. The guy just shows up. His work is only to be busy siring children. And that is why it is dangerous if a man is giving his profile or um, what he is good at. If among what the man says, among what he is good at, if he has included the one line, I am good in bed, <laughs> know that you are manning a porcupine. <laughs> Straight away. You are already, you are dead. You are, you are goose is as good as cooked. You cannot be a husband whose only occupation is be, being good in bed. Being good in bed cannot even appear in the, in the CV. Allah, God is good. Okay, number six, pride and a feeling of self-sufficiency. Pride, this one always, you know, the feeling of self-sufficiency is part of arrogance. It is so sad when, and, and the, the pride makes in you know, one, one's powers to look down on the other. You know, somebody talks to you as if uh, marrying you was to do a favor to you. And there are men who will straight away tell their wives that uh, you should be happy that I married you. Uh, because that means that that husband is your savior. Or a lady telling the man that uh, if I didn't marry you, you would have been nothing. That's the way you are useless. You are who you are because of me. Allah, you are his Jesus now, his savior. At that point, there is nothing you can discuss because always you come in as the superior one. So all the decision to be made, you are the one to make. Number seven, entitlement. Entitlement is what we call this, the sickness of job, to be entitled. There are four ways of entering into marriage. The first one is called 2080. 80 20, 50 50, 100 100. This is the, the desired and the ideal. Now, the other three uh, will presuppose that I am entering as the big person. If, I'm, if it is 80 20, it would mean that uh, I am giving my 80 to you. You only come with the 20 because even your family, you people have nothing. So I am even saving everybody. So somebody comes and then because he married you and he educating your sisters and brothers and buying your parents' clothes, so you are just like another house help. Your contribution in that marriage is only to sire children, which he can find elsewhere. So you are doing a job that can be done by somebody else. Actually, maybe somebody else is also already doing it. Only that you as you compliment those zenye hazijulikani. We kazi yako ni kuzaa watoto wenye watajulikana. And then you adjust the and you have no say. And the moment you start talking up talking unabiwa pana kubuka kichwa. I saved you. So the man has that entitlement. There is another entitlement that comes through a culture. There are some cultures that are so dehumanizing. And that is why when I talk about um, cross-cultural marriages, I am so clear here that before you enter into another culture for marriage, please understand that culture. If you are entering into a culture where women don't talk and they are not supposed to be seen, then there is a problem. If, if it is permissible and it has been accepted, Please understand that bit. So that when you, got, you get married in that culture, you will know that in this culture, this is how they do it, and this is how they do it, and this is how they do it. I have no problem, I'll adjust. Or I can't take it. But it would be so imprudent of you, and so unwise, to enter into that culture with your eyes closed, and then later you start demonizing that culture. You could have studied that culture and, and, and ask a few questions. How do you do this? How do you do this? And not just how, also ask why. 
But you can only do that at least if you have one benefit, the benefit of, that, of the language of that culture. In fact, the greatest injustice you can do to yourself is to enter into a culture you, have, you don't know the language, you don't know their idioms, you don't know their anything, you are just there. Such that when you go visiting, there is nobody you can see. Uh, they are talking, you are just there. Your work is to look beautiful, smiling like a small goat. Na wanasokota luga yao, na niwe wanasegenya. Zemba hii, haka nikandegu kabisa. Mulikatoa wapi. Mulikatoa wapi. And you know, waze, 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 waze kwa kasha, they are very, very honest. Ati, hey, kwa ni yaka akakuli. Because ye, yeah, maybe wewe, you are from a kasha where you are being very slim, is being heavenly. It's like a gift from heaven. But for them, they want somebody who has a few, a few GBs. <laughs> and then you show up there looking like a javelin. With the, ear, with the ears and nose painted. Too much to a car who will come to a all. I love you, me hang wire. Wire is a maskio. I love you, I'm not going to say that too heavy. Na hata hujia taku wasalimia kwa luga yao, hakuna kitu, unajua, unasima, unabia ti. Yaje, utiaji wa Nairobi. I love you, I'm not going to say that you, you know what? Eh, tuna, tuna, atu liko tunasoma na ye. Ye, na ogena kwa luga yao. I love you, unajaribu kuji express. Na kashenke gine ka ukora. Habo dipo udajua, haujui. Kutoka hapo uh, mtoto naabiwa sasa, eh, tutakuogeresha. Tuta, tuta so the next time he'll go alone, that is when you realize kame umana. And then you start telling us, no, hawa watu, ni watu wabaya sana. Siyo wabaya. Hauko umewasoma. Just admit that you made a mistake. And because of that, maybe you can correct it because there is, there is nobody who is late to fix their marriage. Nobody. And I want to request those who, have not, who, are, not get, who are not married yet. And you want, you'd want to get married in another culture. Please understand a few things about them. Just read. Hata kama huta uliza, soma tu tafadhali. Soma tu. Soma tu. If isivike pali ya bapo, unaigia katika culture na huko, wanawake hawa ogei. Pana, me where I'm coming from, uh, my dad taught me to be assertive. Where? <laughs> Are you married by your father? So if you, if you have been taught, you should have known where your rights stop and where culture starts dictating. And you know, as human beings, we are more of cultural beings than we are spiritual and religious. If you didn't know, now you know. Finally, misplaced, misplaced niceness. Now this one sounds weird. Because we are supposed to be nice, aren't we? We are supposed to be nice. Now in marriage, being nice is not a calling. In marriage, being nice is suspicious. In marriage, we say, one of, the, one of the principles, stop being nice, be bold. Because nice people rarely speak their minds. Nice people, they never want to say anything that can hurt the other person. And maybe you are married to some, somebody who does not want to hear truth. Ukimuabia ukweli, mnakosana. And because you want to be nice, now you start now sugarcoating. You, you start now diplomacy. No, I did not say that you are, you are drunk. I just said that uh, you'll be trying yogurt. No. Moabie, sitagagi mlevi na ukilewa lala kwa kiti. He bedroom, si ya walevi. That is boldness. Usimuabie we kuja tu lale, ata ukizikia kususu we jisaidia tu nitaweka nylon. Ala! No! Please be bold. Because utakaa tu hivo, siku moja jamata kuja na matope aigie bed. Azame ni yake, na we ni wake na alikununua. Lafu zame, it's okay, it's okay. Wea igia tu. Aha. No. There is what we call in marriage misplaced niceness. 
misplaced niceness can, be, can make you to be treated like a slave. Getting married does not mean that you lost your voice or your identity. No. Remember, you are one sacramentary, but you are two existentially. Allah? Is that difficult in mathematics? No. Sacramentally, you are one. Existentially, you are two distinct persons. Once that is really clear, then to Kosawa. And then you, you'll be more to ask now, what, what and what is draining our marriage? So that moving forward as we continue to praying, we say that we have got this and this and this challenge in our marriage. These are the areas that we are having our marriage drained and therefore we can work on that. And I want to say this, eh? as you work on your marriage, please know that eh, nobody is ever late to fix their marriage and don't give up. Please don't give up. Never give up. Even if you are married to just a difficult human being, the God we worship is the God one who brings prodigal children home and the God who actually brought back to life dead people. The same God who gave breath to dry bones. The same God, the same God who changed Saul to Paul. Maybe right now your spouse is a Saul. Saul has a possibility of becoming Paul 